Jian Xing and Lin Jia were moving tables together. Lin Jia had quite a few old classmates in her class. Some boys came over to help. She waved them off and guided them to Jian Xing instead. No need, I can handle it myself. Jian Xing was cut off mid sentence. Hey, it's you. Jian Xing looked up to see a familiar face. I'm Dai Yu Nian. Dai Yu Nian introduced himself, chuckling sheepishly. I accidentally bumped into you during the midterm exam. I'm sorry. Jian Xing remembered him. To be precise, she recalled the inadvertent collision scene. She would forever remember her feelings from that day. She smiled at Dai Yu Nian and reassured him, It's okay. Dai Yu Nian was neither particularly lively nor reserved, but he likely hadn't interacted with girls much. His ears turned red after just a few exchanges. Avoiding Jian Xing's gaze, he insisted on helping move the tables while repeating, Let me do it, let me help you. The table indeed was slightly heavy. Jian Xing didn't want to refuse and appear ungrateful, so she simply thanked him and started moving the chairs into the classroom with him. In our class, the number of students choosing liberal arts is equal to those choosing sciences, so our head teacher told us to choose any of the vacant seats first. We can switch when there's availability, Dai Yunayan explained as they walked, but nobody really has a strong need for swapping seats, so that time of switching isn't exactly certain. Although Dai Yunayan spoke quite a bit, his information was helpful. In a matter of minutes, Jian Xing had a basic understanding of the classroom dynamics. Under Dai Yunayan's guidance, they stopped at the back door of the classroom which was nearly full. All the students were curious about the new girl and turned around to look at her. Jian Xing accidentally glanced towards the third row from the center. It was empty. The desk was cluttered with books, not arranged neatly. There was a school uniform blocking the outermost drawer, its sleeve hanging and swaying like a willow over a lake, stirring ripples without any deliberate attempt. Because the wind was moving, so was her heart. Jian Xing pulled herself together and briefly scanned the vacant seats. Lin Jia leaned in to discuss, let's not go for the back rows, there's a whole bunch of tall guys there. Why don't we choose a front one? Jian Xing pursed her lips, refraining from making an immediate decision. Just then, their head teacher, Zhou Qi, arrived. Why aren't you girls inside? Zhou Qi taught physics and had been the physics teacher for the third class. So, he knew the students quite well. He looked at the vacant seats and then turned to a boy, Chen Bo Yu, whose table hasn't been moved. The other students turned to look and laughed. Chen Bo Yu, who was tall and slouching in the back row, replied Mr. Zhou, that's my son's seat. Is that so? Zhou Qi wasn't phased. He scanned the class and countered, the father's here, where's the son? He's at the bookstore returning a book for his uncle. Chen Bo Yu replied. Zhou Qi replied, busy as always. Zhou Qi didn't dwell on Zhu Zheng King's whereabouts. He was much more decisive than Zhu Changlin, who would give you the time to make a choice. Zhou Qi would opt for a clean cut and make the decision for you. Three minutes later, Jian Xing found herself sitting in the third row on the right side of the classroom. Right in the two o'clock direction of Zhu Zheng King. At this point, Zhu Zheng King hadn't returned yet. Jian Xing's heart began to race. She kept her back straight and couldn't help adjusting her posture. The differences were just in the subtle details. Just as she was about to write down the seventh word, a languid voice came from the back door, reporting in. Zhou Qi lifted his chin and instructed, arrange the seating chart as soon as possible and post it on the desk. Zhu Zheng King agreed. It was still cold outside. The back door opened and closed again, bringing a strong gust of cold wind into the classroom. He walked to his seat, sat down, asked someone, is it over? and then asked another person, can I borrow a highlighter? The sound of the highlighter cap being removed and its scratching on paper echoed in the room. Without turning her head or readjusting her posture anymore, Jian Xing immersed herself in the quiet world of her own while listening to the dialogue. The three-hour evening self-study passed both hurriedly and slowly. As the bell rang marking the end of the study session, the classroom started buzzing. Some students were getting acquainted with their new desk mates, discussing test questions, or talking about a TV show. The class had changed, but the atmosphere hadn't. Within this noise, Jian Xing found a subtle sense of belonging. She lifted her head, meeting Lin Jia's waving hand. Unluckily, her seat was diagonal to Lin Jia's seat across the classroom. I'm leaving first, Lin Jia shouted. Sure, see you tomorrow, Jian Xing waved back. As Lin Jia turned around to leave, Jian Xing, acting as if watching Lin Jia leave, her gaze actually shifted to the back row. 
Once Lin Jia left, Jian Xing couldn't resist taking a glance at the direction her heart longed for while pretending to look at the clock. But she didn't anticipate making eye contact with him. Jian Xing froze momentarily. She wanted to look away but feared that it'd appear abrupt. So, she could only keep her entire body tense and continue making eye contact with Zhu Zhen King. He stood up. Just as he started moving, Jian Xing's heart lurched. She held her breath. He was approaching her. Every step he took felt like it landed in her heart. Jian Xing, he called out her name, welcome. Jian Xing swallowed, nodded nod with an emotionless expression, and answered in a monotonous voice, thank you. Zhu Zhenqing casually took the seat next to her across the aisle without any hesitation. He sat there with both legs in the aisle, picked up a pen from the table, and asked Jian Xing, Kin Jiming told us about the incident that day. Are you okay now? It was her who broke the appointment, but he came to sympathize. Jian Xing felt somewhat numb at the root of her tongue. She couldn't tell where her heart was. She just felt their proximity. Someone opened the window and the breeze seemed to carry his scent. A simple scent of laundry detergent. Jian Xing felt a bit suffocated in the well-ventilated classroom. Even so, she wasn't breathing noticeably. She just jerked her head repeatedly, in a somewhat chaotic fashion. She shook her head while saying, I'm fine, nothing's wrong, everything's okay. Zhu Zhen King's face briefly showed a hint of hesitation, but he quickly buried it and smiled again. That's good to hear. With this, he stood up, presumably to leave. Hearing the distinct snap as he clicked his pen, Jian Xing's tightly stretched nerves snapped. In that moment, she blurted out suddenly, Zhu Zhen King. He turned back in response to him. Jian Xing forced a smile, happy birthday. I'm really sorry about that day. It's fine. Thank you, Zhu Zhen King said just before leaving, don't take it to heart. It was clear that Zhu Zhen King was popular in the class. Before leaving, everyone was willing to bid him farewell. The boys in the back row were also willing to leave together. A group of them, with their arms around each other's shoulders, drew him into the center. Everyone here was at the center of attention, but he still stood out the most. Jian Xing quietly withdrew her gaze, looking down at her fingers, twisted under the pressure of her own grip. She let go, but her fingers didn't immediately regain their natural state. The fingertips were congested and painful, a feeling akin to her state when she was in the morgue. At times, she didn't even know what to do. She always ended up one step closer to Zhu Zhen King at her most vulnerable moments, and his superiority seemed to constantly remind her, see, it's a life that's been stolen, it can't be lived well. But also seemed to say, it's nothing, it's so hard, but didn't you still successfully come to his side? However, just coming to his side had almost exhausted all of her strength. She didn't even have the strength to stand by his side. When she returned home, Jian Ru hadn't returned yet. Jian Xing sat in her room for a while, then turned her head to gaze at the window frame in a daze. She found herself increasingly caught in the dense nail holes. If she looked at them for too long, the nail holes seemed to silently enlarge, like the black holes created by meteorite strikes. If she wasn't careful, she felt she might be swallowed up. Just as she was looking, Lu Cheng suddenly walked into her field of vision. It was the first time a person had appeared in this black hole. Jian Xing hesitated for a moment, and quickly realized that it wasn't that Lu Cheng had appeared in the black hole, but that Lu Cheng was in the yard. He had just come out of Grandma's room. What was he doing in Grandma's room at this time? The visibility of the new glass that Lu Cheng replaced after the window was broken wasn't very good, it's hard to see the inside from the outside, but from the inside, one could barely make out some outlines. Jian Xing watched Lu Cheng smoke at Grandma's doorstep for a long time. His gaze was towards her room for most of that duration. What was he looking at? Several times, Jian Xing wanted to open the window but was halted in her tracks by Lu Cheng's silence. They both seemed to be conveying something to each other, something as ambiguous as the glass window. Not long after, Lu Cheng went back into the house, scattering the cigarette ashes on the porch before entering. Jian Xing shifted her gaze back to her test papers. She didn't write a single word until Jian Ru came back, finished freshening up and went back to the room. As the night grew darker, Emotions always found a way to control one's nerves, the quiet night was best for confiding in a friend. Jian Xing had no confessions to make, but she did have a friend. Her friend was in her phone. The phone was... Jian Xing's pupils contracted sharply and she suddenly stood up. The sound of the chair scraping against the floor was loud. Everyone had been quite sensitive recently, 
So Lu Cheng quickly knocked on the door to inquire, What happened, Jian Xing? No, I accidentally moved the chair. Jian Xing's voice was clearly trembling, but perhaps it was due to the door. Lu Cheng didn't pick up on it. He commented, It's late, go to sleep after you finish writing. Jian Xing didn't respond affirmatively. Instead, she turned and moved to the door, opening it. It seemed to surprise Lu Cheng. He has never been good at hiding things, so Jian Xing saw clear hints of evasion in his eyes. Jian Xing asked, Why aren't you asleep? I was just busy with something, Lu Cheng hastily replied. Go to sleep early. If you can't finish writing, just continue tomorrow. It's fine, Erm. He didn't wait for Jian Xing to say anything. He just turned and went back to his room. His actions even seemed a bit rushed, like he was feeling guilty. Jian Xing watched him close the door, waited for a while more, but didn't hear Jian Ru's voice, probably because she was asleep. Subconsciously, Jian Xing felt like she received some form of information. Instead of closing the door and returning to her desk, she walked to the yard. When she opened the house's door, the noise wasn't particularly careful. If Lu Cheng was awake, he would definitely hear it. She entered Grandma's room and sat on the edge of the bed in the dark. She had been sitting in silence for quite a while before she extended her hand to reach into the blankets. She found her phone, but it wasn't in its original place. It was still dark in the room. Jian Xing held the phone, turned her head, and looked towards the doorway. Lu Cheng was just smoking there. She noticed a small spot illuminated by the moonlight. It's been almost a week. The snowstorm had finally stopped. The moon had also come out. The next morning, as Jian Xing went out, she bumped into Jian Ru head on. Her face was pale, her lips were also white, making Jian Xing ask, Mom, are you feeling unwell? Jian Ru gruffly muttered, I'd be better off dead. Jian Xing closed her mouth. Lu Cheng then quickly came out of the house, holding a sweater in his hand, noticed Jian Xing and said, Your mom has a fever. I am going with her to check it out. You go to school by yourself. Here is some money, buy something to eat on the way. He rushed to catch up with Jian Ru after finishing speaking. Jian Ru seemed to dislike his company and impatiently said, I already said I am going myself. Are you just being lazy? Are you afraid to compete for a spot? I already told you, we are just begging for food, who is going to look down on whom? They curse at you and you can't fight back? Are you even a man at all? I'm really unlucky to have ended up with you. In the early morning when the day hadn't fully lightened, the alley was quiet which amplified the sound of Jian Ru's voice. It echoed in Jian Xing's ears like the stereo surround in a theater. Jian Xing stared at their retreating figures, didn't withdraw her gaze until her eyes were a bit dry. She turned back into the house, brought out her nearly dead phone, and went into Grandma's room. Before she turned it off to charge, she checked it and saw that Chen Yanbei didn't reply to her message sent at AM. She waited another two minutes before turning off the phone to go to school. Jian Xing didn't buy breakfast on the way to school, she just bought a bottle of milk from the supermarket and entered the class. It was still early, many classmates were having breakfast. Because it was cold in the winter, no one wanted to open the window, causing the classroom to smell bad. But when immersed in it, it felt warm. The smell of life is often like this. Jian Xing sat at her desk. As soon as she sat down, Dai Yunian, a student sitting in front, turned around with a large bag and asked, Jian Xing, do you want some buns? Jian Xing raised her head and saw a table full of buns. She was startled and reflexively asked, How, how did you buy so many? A, that's his daily routine, her deskmate Guo Fu replied. Jian Xing, take one. Anyway, they'll be all distributed later. Dayunian nodded and said, My family sells buns. My mom gives me a steamer tray every morning to share with everyone. I fed my classmates for three years in junior high. Mainly because it's delicious, Dai's deskmate turned around and grabbed one more. Wake one buns are very delicious. Seriously, you have to wait in a long line if you go buy them yourself. Dayunian nodded with pride, it's a specialty of our county. Jian Xing smiled, raised her hand to take one, but suddenly another hand took one before her. His movements were neither fast nor slow. They traced a trajectory before Jian Xing's eyes. Although Jian Xing didn't capture the details on his hand, she did detect a familiar scent, the scent of laundry detergent. She paused, her hand hanging in the air. She looked up and saw Zhu Zhengqing holding the bun and nodding at Dai Yunian, saying, Thanks, brother Yu. He probably didn't pay attention to whose table the bun was originally on because for him everyone was merely a classmate. Jian Xing lowered her eyes, 
took one from the side and said to Dayunian, Thank you. Dayunian asked, Aren't you going to take another one? You don't need to buy breakfast in the future, you see. None of them buy. They eat these. Jian Xing shook her head. One is enough. After hearing Jian Xing's reply, Dayunian, with an O, took the bag of buns and casually placed it on his deskmate's table, allowing anyone who walked by to grab one. Not long after, Dayunian turned again, this time with a bottle of strawberry-flavored probiotic yogurt in his hand, and asked, Jian Xing, do you drink this? Jian Xing took out her own yogurt from the drawer and said, I already have one. Only then did Dai Yunian say, oh oh oh, and turn back around. At noon, Jian Xing bumped into Qin Jiming when passing AI-77. He stopped her and asked, don't you have your phone with you? Jian Xing shook her head and asked, what happened? Qin Jiming said, Chen Yanbei replied to your message. Oh, I'll look at it when I get home, Jian Xing said. Qin Jiming asked, why did you leave your phone at home? Ekman's place is not convenient enough. I can find a place for you in the school. Jian Xing said it was fine. Lunch break was short. Given that Jian Ru and Lu Cheng didn't have their stall today, they might be waiting early for her to have lunch. She didn't chat much with Qin Jiming, fearing it would delay her time. After Jian Xing left, Qin Jiming stared at her retreating figure for a long time. Zhang Bai Shen approached from behind, utilizing his height advantage and draped an arm over his shoulder. What are you looking at? Qin Jiming did not turn his head and muttered, looking at the distance. The girl from afar pleads you to stay Zhang Bai Shen hummed with a smile. Stop just watching, go pursue. Qin Jiming, what tune is this? So tacky. Zhang Bai Shen straightened up, don't expose your highbrow and lowbrow cultural level as soon as you open your mouth. It's sung by Sister Song Zaying. How can it be tacky? Isn't Sister Song Zaying singing about the guests from afar? Zhu Zhenqing walked over. He glanced at Zhang Bai Shen. You want to be nagged by Grandma again, don't you? Zhang Bai Shen clicked his tongue, shrugged, and tucked his hands into his sleeve, saying, Grandma Zhu, please shut up. You, Zhu Zhenqing swore, elbowed Zhang Bai Shen and naturally asked Qin Jiaming. Who are you chasing? Qin Jiaming. Zhang Bai Shen couldn't stop laughing. Seriously, can't you learn something good from him? Qin Jiaming was speechless. I'm not chasing anyone. That Jian Xing, your classmate, my sister. What am I chasing? It would be more like me worrying about her. The smile on Zhang Bai Shen's lips faded a bit at the mention of Jian Xing's name. He turned his head in surprise and looked at Zhu Zhenqing. So it's your classmate, Zhu Ji. Are you the one pursuing her? Zhu Zhenqing didn't expect the joke to involve Jian Xing. Thinking about Jian Xing's perennially cold and calm face, and her defensive action after the last exam, he dropped the joking tone, stop talking nonsense. Zhang Bai Shen raised an eyebrow, what's the matter? So serious? Something is up. Zhu Zhenqing silently swore three words. Zhang Bai Shen was not angry and said, no problem, I'll have my mom visit you this weekend. She said she missed you the day before yesterday. Everyone knows that Auntie Zhang is very fond of Zhu Zhenqing and always pinches his face and tousles his hair when they meet. Zhu Zhenqing. Bro. Zhang Bai Shen walked away, taking a casual glimpse in the direction where Jian Xing had left. Jian Xing thought she would see Jian Ru and Lavi Cheng when she returned home, but when she pushed the door, the house was empty. She first went to Jian Ru's room, checked the phone call log, and sure enough, a call had come in just two minutes before. Jian Xing dialed back and it was Le Cheng who answered. Your mom has a bit of inflammation. She is in the hospital for an x-ray now. You take care of your own lunch. If you don't want to make something, go out to eat. There is money in the drawer at home. Jian Xing lowered her head, staring at the keypad on the phone. She asked, is it serious? Le Cheng's tone was light. It's not serious, just a fever. Don't worry, it's okay. Jian Xing responded with a hum. After discussing these matters, there didn't seem to be anything else for them to talk about. The silence elongated the gaps between their breaths, fertilizing awkwardness. Soon La Cheng hurriedly said, I'll hang up first, don't forget to eat. Jian Xing did not immediately go to eat. She returned to her grandmother's room first to retrieve her cell phone. She turned the device on, logged into QQ, and saw messages popping up from Chen Yanbai. White smoke, why did you sleep so late? White smoke. Are you going to rebel, bro? White smoke, wait until Baojin is bedridden, then start your rebellion. White smoke, so hungry, got up late this morning. There isn't much left in the cafeteria, so annoyed. 
white smoke. Ah, I kind of miss the leek dumplings my grandmother makes. Have her make you some tonight and eat a few for me. White smoke, oh, I'll be back for the May 1st holiday. White smoke, don't stand me up again. White smoke, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. A few casual conversations, Ji and Xing had been looking at them for a long time. At this moment, Chen Yanbei sent another message. What's the time? Aren't you eating? Playing with your phone? Ji and Xing replied to her. There's nobody at home. Smoke of Yanbei. All right then, why did you go to bed so late yesterday? Ji and Xing typed for words in the send bar, deleted them one by one after a while and said, I woke up in the middle of the night. Smoke of Yanbei. Oh, you scared me. I thought something happened to you. Bamboo Grove. What could happen to me? Smoke of Yanbei, I know you're all right, but I'm worried about if Tyrant got sick. Bamboo Grove, she got sick. Smoke of Yanbei, is it contagious? Remember to take preventative medication in advance. Jian Xing chuckled. They chatted a bit more. Chen Yanbei asked her to go eat. Jian Xing agreed. She didn't immediately put down her phone. While looking at their casual chats, she suddenly sent a message. Chen Yanbei. Yanbei replied with a question mark. A minute passed, she didn't ask anything else. Chen Yanbei directly made a call. Despite being on silent, Jian Xing was startled. She reflexively glanced back at the door. A few seconds later, she got up to close the door before answering. What's wrong? Chen Yanbei spoke indifferently. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that? Jian Xing closed her mouth. Chen Yanbei waited for her for a few seconds, then asked, What's wrong with you? Jian Xing sat back beside her bed. Her hands loosely clenched into fists were resting on her knees. She was looking down and didn't blink for a while. Until there was some noise at the door, Jian Xing quickly said, My parents are back, gotta hang up. She thought she could pretend to be calm all along, but when push comes to shove, she panicked and stuffed her phone randomly into her pillowcase. Opening the door, make a move to step into the living room when Jian Ru was looking back at her upon hearing the noise. Lu Cheng was holding medicine. Before Jian Ru could open her mouth, he says, Haven't eaten yet? What were you doing in that room? What would you like to eat? I'll make it. The topic was redirected. Jian Ru didn't say anything and walked into the room after pushing open the door. Jian Xing glanced over at Lu Cheng. Lu Cheng had just casually glanced at her, but now he was avoiding her gaze. While walking into living room, he says, no time, I'll just make some instant noodles. Want some hot dogs? Jian Xing followed him and said, It doesn't matter. After dinner, Jian Ru was clearly not in a good condition. Just told Lu Cheng to call her in the afternoon. She needed to go to the stall at night. Jian Xing was looking at the dishes and bowls which are yet to be cleaned up. Spoke softly, or let's not go tonight. Jian Ru let out a cold laugh. You don't realize the hardship. Better to focus on your studies than worry about anything else. After finishing her words, Jian Ru turned around and went back to her room, slamming the door loudly. Lu Cheng was embarrassed, his tone a bit stiff. Jian Xing, your mother's just not feeling well also. She's in a bad mood. Jian Xing doesn't respond. She was just thinking in this room who was in a good mood and who wasn't sick. Jian Xing, are you not feeling well? As soon as she entered the school in the afternoon, Lin Jia stopped Jian Xing at the school gate, saying, You look so pale. Jian Xing says, maybe I just woke up. You still take a nap during the day, good habits, Lin Jia says, my parents always urge me to go to sleep, but once I get a hold of my phone, I can't stop. Jian Xing says, I sometimes get carried away too. It's okay, we're all the same, Lin Jia remembered something, hey did you join our class group yet? Will you be online tonight? Can I pull you in? Jian Xing said, at the weekend. Alright then, said Lin Jia. It's perfect because everyone will be there and they talk a lot of crap. Jian Xing just smiled. After entering the classroom, Jian Xing and Lin Jia each settled in their own seats. Lin Jia's spot was near the front door, where she usually exited from. When Jian Xing passed by the back door, she glanced at Zhu Zheng King's seat, hesitated for a bit, but ultimately decided to enter the front door with Lin Jia. Navigating around the teacher's desk and from under the lecturer's podium, Jian Xing saw Zhu Zheng King facing backward, engrossed in something with Chen Boyu. In the row in front of Zhu Zheng King sat Lan Yu. She seemed to have a query and receiving no response after calling out to him twice, she turned around and tugged at Zhu Zheng King's school jacket. Forced to lean back, he laughed and turned his head to ask Lan Yu what she wanted. Simultaneously as he turned, Jian Xing nonchalantly took her seat. 
Soon after, she overheard Chen Boyu exclaiming ouch, before adding, English class prefect, can you spare our physics class prefect and class president? Dream on, Lan Yu retorted confidently. Gradually, with the growing number of students, the air in the room began to turn thin, leaving Jian Xing gasping for breath. The fourth class in the afternoon was English, taught by a teacher from the Hongzi department, whom Jian Xing has heard of before. The teacher upon entering the class asked, a new student has joined, have you already posted Zhu Zhen King's seating chart? Let me take a look. It's already up. It's on the desk, replied Zhu Zhen King. All right, after matching the names to the faces, the English teacher called out to Jian Xing, Jian Xing, I know who you are, the English class prefect from class three, right? I heard you excel in English. Jian Xing smiled. In her peripheral vision, she noticed Lan Yu glancing over at her. Pretending not to notice, Jian Xing averted her gaze back towards the English teacher. Keep it up, the English teacher encouraged without saying more. All right, my little ones, open your English textbooks now. Amid the rustling sounds of pages being turned, Jian Xing glanced at the lecture platform, spotting the seating chart stuck on the desk. The 45-minute class passed by quickly. The second the school bell rang signaling the end of the class, the English teacher closed her book and left without wasting a moment. Are you going on a date again, teacher? Chen Boyu teased. Do you care? The teacher retorted playfully before humming a tune and exiting the room. After the laughter subsided, the other students in class left in groups to get lunch. As Lin Jia, who was standing at the lecturer's podium, called out to her and glanced casually at the seating chart on the desk, Jian Xing immediately closed her book and walked over. She walked briskly, almost impatiently. By the time she reached the podium, her pace had slowed. She stopped next to Lin Jia, appearing as nonchalant as an onlooker. However, her earnest gaze betrayed her innermost feelings. The seating chart was clearly and neatly labeled, with the boxes drawn in straight lines, indicating a teenager's unique confidence and certainty. To accommodate the teacher's perspective, the chart and the actual seats were mirrored. First, she checked out the cell for the third row in the front. It was tidier compared to his writing on the blackboard for the first time. Then, she directed her gaze towards the 8 o'clock direction. Two characters, Ji and Xing. At first glance, the Xing character seemed somewhat similar to the right half of the King character in Zhu Zhen King's name. She was aware that this similarity might only be perceived by her. It was entirely subjective. Yet, it brought a sense of joy and delight to her, warming her heart like the sun. At the end of February, the earth begins to rejuvenate. Although the temperature is still low, the sun graces us with its presence every day. After the free session in physical education class, Lin Jia coaxed Jian Xing to join her in watching the boys play ball. The players were divided into two teams, one comprised of their fellow classmates and the other of a senior year, Kin Jiaming's class. Jian Xing only learned that their physical education classes coincided when she bumped into Kin Jiaming on the playground before class. Most likely because of Kin Jiaming's close relationship with Zhu Zhen King, their classes often play ball together. They were doing exactly this now, even intentionally promoting Kin Jiaming and Zhu Zhen King as forwards for their respective teams. In performing tasks, Zhu Zhen King's style is generally just right, even in playing ball, as a forward, he wasn't too aggressive. This allowed spectators to feel comfortable, some even took out their phones to take pictures and videos, audaciously spreading and commenting on them. Among the hustle and bustle, Jian Xing seemed indifferent, as if uninterested in this basketball game. If only her eyes could be just as indifferent. Unfortunately, the sun was very bright, making her face very red. These were obviously the proof of secretly liking someone. Jian Xing, Lin Jia quietly leaned over. I have a question for you. Jian Xing blinked, leaned a little closer to Lin Jia and said, Ask. Lin Jia closed in even more, her eyes fixed in the direction of the basketball hoop. She whispered, That guy that was just talking to you, are you close with him? Jian Xing was taken aback and turned to look at Lin Jia. Why are you looking at me? Lin Jia asked. Jian Xing didn't say a word. A few seconds later, Lin Jie owned up to her feelings saying, All right, all right, all right, I admit it, I have a crush on him. I want to get to know him. Is that okay? He, Jian Xing hesitated when she saw the look in Lin Jie's eyes. What's with him? Lin Jie took the initiative after only two seconds of silence. Does he like someone else? Jian Xing silently nodded. She thought Lin Jie would be sad, but unexpectedly she comes back with, 
So what, at this age, who doesn't have someone they like? It's okay, I don't care, as long as he is single. He is indeed single. Jian Xing turned her gaze back to the court. The boys were bustling about, each having shed their school uniform jackets and cotton coats, most of them only wearing a sweatshirt, all looking energetic and spirited. So, what's his name? Lin Jia asked, Actually, I've seen him before, he's always with Zhu Zhenqing, but never had a chance to know him, didn't expect you to know him, huh? Jian Xing chuckled and said, His name is Qin Jiaming, a sophomore. How did you guys meet? Lin Jia asked again. Jian Xing remembered her first meeting with Qin Jiaming, she chuckled and said, It was my friend's birthday, we were dining out, he apparently lost a game with his friends and came to ask my friend for her phone number. And then, inquired Lin Jia, where is the humor in this? Jian Xing laughed even brighter, then he started swearing oaths, but it started thundering. My friend told him to shut up and not to swear randomly. Ha ha ha, Lin Jia laughed for a while before suddenly asking, so he likes your friend, doesn't he? Jian Xing never thought Lin Jia would be so quick on the uptake, but she nods truthfully. Sigh, your friend must be very pretty then. Jian Xing wondered how Lin Jia came to that conclusion and gave her a puzzled look. Only a pretty person can be so bold, said Lin Jia. I'm usually so fierce. If a guy came up to ask for my number at night with a bunch of onlookers, I would just feign weakness. Jian Xing said, she is indeed very pretty. Lin Jia covered her chest, ah, it hurts. Jian Xing grinned watching her act. After a while, she said, but Qin Jiming didn't used to be like this. Like what? Lin Jia asked. Jian Xing squinted slightly looking at Qin Jiming and said, the first time I saw him, he looked like a good student and his grades are actually not bad. Later, he confessed his feelings to my friend. My friend told him he still acted like a kid, the kids he hangs out with were also kids, and said they weren't from the same world. Ah, uh, Lin Jia's expression was a little complicated, so is Kin Jiming like this. Ruined because of that girl. Sorry, because of your friend. Ruined is not the word. On the court, Qin Jiang missed a ball and, somewhat discontentedly, made a distant point at Chen Boyu. Chen Boyu made a face and pushed Zhu Zhenqing in front of him for cover, much to Qin Jiang's disapproval who bumped into Zhu Zhenqing. Soon after, Zhu Zhenqing blocked a three-pointer by Qin Jiang. After the shot, Zhu Zhenqing stood with a laugh, single-handedly blocking his body and bowed towards Qin Jiang with a mix of gentlemanly manners and deserving of a beatdown, causing a stir among the female spectators. Jian Xing was indifferent to the crowd rooting for him. She said, maybe he just wants to see her world. Perhaps he wanted to be someone she would like. He didn't understand that the kind of love Chen Yanbei wanted didn't require any sacrifice. That's quite romantic, Lin Jia cursed. Damn, I like him even more now. She stood up, I'm going to bring him some water. Lin Jia, with no hesitation, headed directly towards Qin Jiang, disregarding the teasing from the crowd, and even bluntly speaking to Qin Jiang. Under the sun, Jian Xing saw her slightly blushed ears, and her fingers secretly intertwined behind her back. For some reason, seeing this scene made Jian Xing happy. She watched, slightly straightening her body, and made a picture frame with her hands, encapsulating them within it. Before class ended, the teacher called for assembly. As Jian Xing walked past the court on her way out, Qin Jiang called her out loud, Jian Xing. His voice garnered the attention of many. The boys gave her meaningful glances, while the girls exhibited an unmistakable hint of curiosity. Jian Xing walked over unfazed, asking Qin Jiang what was up. Qin Jiang casually replied, nothing, just saying hello. Jian Xing thought he was weird and turned to leave, but Qin Jiang stopped her with a laugh saying, just joking, do you need any test papers? What? Jian Xing asked. Test papers, not from the school my friend got from another place, Qin Jiang said, I'll send you a set later. Jian Xing replied, okay. Qin Jiang nodded, and as if remembering something, added, I'll leave it at Xinhua Bookstore, the one near our school. You can pick it up directly. I'm worried that we won't be able to meet up, our evening self-study session has been getting later. Jian Xing agreed. After Jian Xing left, Qin Jiang leaned and stared at her for a while before picking up his jacket to make a call elsewhere. Chen Yanbei answered quickly, but the signal was terrible, and his speech was intermittent. Qin Jiang asked, what's going on at your end? Chen Yanbei was exasperated, don't waste time talking, spit it out. Qin Jiang replied, everything seems to be okay. What about her complexion? Chen Yanbei asked. She's pale, Qin Jiang responded, I can't tell from here, 
if you were in front of me, I could tell if you've gained or lost weight. Chen Yan Bei cursed directly, get lost. Qin Jiang chuckled, are you being a little oversensitive? At this rate, I'm even suspecting that I might be infatuated with a same-sex individual. Sensitivity my ass, you're just useless, Chen Yan Bei retorted, I'm not wasting my time with you hanging up, this terrible signal is driving me crazy. After hanging up the call, Qin Jiang was left wondering how could the signal be so bad. In the afternoon, Jian Xin and Lin Jia went out for a meal. As they passed by Ai Ki Ki, Lin Jia peered inside, is Qin Jiang in there? Come on, I'll treat you to some bubble tea. Jian Xin replied, I, I'm not in the mood for it, it's too rich. Ah, well then, you can accompany me in for a look. Lin Jia pulled Jian Xin along with her into the shop. Qin Jiang wasn't there, but Zhu Zhen King was there, working behind the counter. Lin Jia spotted him and asked incredulously, What's all this? A side job? Zhu Zhen King confirmed, Yeah, what can I get you to drink? Lin Jia answered very generously, Give me the best thing your shop sells. Alrighty. Zhu Zhen King flashed a smile at Jian Xin, What about you? Caught off guard, Jian Xin muttered, Just the original one will do. Lin Jia couldn't help teasing. I thought you didn't want any. What happened? Scared to defy the class president? Jian Xin stiffened up. Zhu Zhen King looked at Jian Xin. Is that so? Not at all. Jian Xin quickly denied. She felt extremely anxious at the prospect of Zhu Zhen King asking, and why? Scrambling frantically to think of an answer. But all Zhu Zhen King did was laugh and say, Yeah, I didn't think so either. With just that one sentence, he threw Jian Xin into such a frenzy that she almost lost her senses. Perhaps the essence of liking someone is the lack of clarity. Because of the lack of clarity, there's always regret. Jian Xin, look at this. Lin Jia pointed to a sticky note. What do you make of this? Because of the lack of clarity, there's always regret. I'm not sure, Jian Xin replied, probably because they didn't leave the best impression. Does one need to be clear-headed to project a perfect image? Lin Jia asked, mistiness has its unique beauty too. Jian Xin replied, True that. Lin Jia sighed, you know, being able to meet someone you like is something to be treasured. I used to think that I would never fall for anyone. Everyone else around me was falling for this one and that one, but the person I liked was myself. Jian Xin chuckled and said, I like you too. Lin Jia feigned surprise. Wow, I actually won over the heart of the icy top student. Hmm. Jian Xin asked, What icy top student? That's what they call you behind your back, Lin Jia explained. Back when we were in class, they always used to murmur about the ice queen who seemed so aloof and unapproachable. Jian Xin chuckled, is that so? Just then, Su Zhen King came over with their teas. Jian Xin accepted hers while maintaining a stiff posture, thanking Su Zhen King. No problem, Su Zhen King replied casually, then looked up at the sticky notes. He was tall enough to see the notes even at the top edge. Several notes in the corner had fallen down because they had been there for a long time. He picked them up and stuck them back on. Lin Jia made fun of him. Hey class president, is this your confession wall? Zhu Zhen King didn't even look at her. Don't ignore these great dreams of love, okay? Lin Jia nodded. My bad, I was too flippant. Right then, another sticky note fell from above, landing on Zhu Zhen King's head. Lin Jia laughed for a moment then read out loud. If this is a confession for you, you should just go be with them. Talk about fate. Without even a glance, Su Zhen King picked up the note from his head and read it with Lin Jia looking over his shoulder. The summer has finally left, and the wind on the campus square continues in an unbroken chain, without any pause. Jian Xin's brain was completely blank. Lin Jia didn't finish reading the note because Su Zhen King reached up and stick it at the highest spot again, saying, Sorry to disappoint you. Lin Jia ribbed, without a name, will never know. Right, Jian Xin? Jian Xin couldn't open her mouth to respond. On the way back, Lin Jia sipped her bubble tea, saying, It's quite good, right? Jian Xin replied, Yes. During self-study in the evening, our Chinese teacher talked a lot about literature with us due to a reading comprehension passage, and she showed us a movie in the second half of the lesson, a screen adaptation of Shen Kong Wen's Beyond Cheng the Border Town. The late actress in the movie was wavering between her feelings for her brother and another man, at which point Guo Fulin, the boy sitting next to me, whispered, Isn't she just like a green tea bitch? Dai Yunian, who sat next to him, retorted in surprise, Oh, so you know what a green tea bitch is. Guo Fulin pushed up his glasses and replied, I know more than that. I know what a white lotus is too. 
This comment elicited quite a bit of laughter from the surrounding students. Chen Boyu, who had a chatty character and enjoyed joking with Lan Yu Blue Moon, caught the joke and said, then Blue Moon must be a man. Blue Moon was so irritated that she turned around to pretend to fight with Chen Boyu. In response to the commotion, Zhu Zheng King, who sat between them, stood up and said, why don't we swap spots and you two can play without disturbing anyone. Some people instigated the swap while Blue Moon blushingly declined. Chen Boyu suggested, I'll swap with you. Zhu Zheng King gave a cold laugh you wish. If you sit here, it will obstruct the view of people around, won't it? Chen Boyu responded, I'll keep quiet. Zhu Zheng King retorted a bit sternly, no more fooling around. The movie is getting pretty serious. You two are disturbing others. Zhu Zheng King didn't usually assert authority, but perhaps due to his inherent commanding aura, the class would quiet down whenever he was a bit stern. Chen Boyu finally stopped making ruckus, and Blue Moon also stopped turning around to disturb Zhu Zheng King. Jian Xing watched their entire exchange. Although she was an outsider, her mood fluctuated with their conversation. Zhu Zheng King was about to exchange his seat with Blue Moon. Zhu Zheng King was about to occupy Blue Moon's seat. Zhu Zheng King would be closer to her, only a corridor away. His image in her peripheral vision would become clearer. But Zhu Zheng King didn't move. The distance between him and her remained an irreducible lengthy hypotenuse. Finally, it was quiet around her. The movie reached its climax. Amid the thunder and lightning, a torrential downpour began. The rain seemed to engulf the mountains from the heavens. The screen faded to black, and the classroom fell into darkness. Jian Xing watched as Kui Kui wandered in the heavy rain, despair brewed in her heart. Alone in the darkness, she shouted for help. Suddenly, the entire classroom was wrapped in her screams. Someone began to sob, including Blue Moon. Blue Moon's deskmate turned back to ask Zhu Zheng King for tissues. Zhu Zheng King stood up and swapped seats with Chen Boyu. The tissues were provided by Chen Boyu. Zhu Zheng King disappeared from Jian Xing's peripheral vision. She stared blankly at the screen and stood up from her seat a few seconds later. She left through the back door, passing Zhu Zheng King. She thought she caught a glimpse of him glancing at her, but she didn't catch his eye. If she had described her previous emotions as being crushed under a mountain, suffocating for breath, then her current feeling was like she was overwhelmed by a flood. The pain from the mountain was heavy and abrupt, the suffocation from drowning in water was long and agonizing. Jian Xing sat alone on the empty sports field, remembering Zulu who wept amidst the crowd on a particular day. She thought for a long time and finally just gently tilted her head upward to look at the moon. There were stars around the moon, each one was bright but not too bright. As she looked up at the sky, she reclined her body, hands pressed to the ground. Her palms felt a slight pain, but she didn't move them. Amid the long and fragmented pain and struggle, she thought of Zhu Zhenqing. How some people could have countless conversations and exchanges with him every day, and yet sharing an evening breeze and watching the same moon was enough to make her happy for a long time. The school bell chimed but the movie hadn't finished, and everyone was still choosing to stay for the rest. Jian Shin quietly left the classroom amidst the tranquility of the scene. As she was about to close the back door, it resisted, pulling back from the inside. She was momentarily startled and let go of the handle. The door swung open. A thin silhouette was drawn onto him by the moonlight. He didn't fully open the door. The room remained dark behind him, yet his eyes shimmered bright, as if he had collected a multitude of stars within them. Jian Xin remained rooted to the spot, staring at him. After what felt like a long pause, she stuttered out, Do you need something? Kin Jiming said he has something to talk to you about, he just texted me. I was going to tell you, but you weren't here, and then I forgot, sorry about that, Zhu Jenqing said. It's okay, said Jian Shin nodding, I got it, thank you. Are you leaving? Not going to continue watching the movie? Su Zhen King asked, probably just making conversation. Jian Shin thought about what had happened in the movie and her heart felt heavy. Her voice was barely a whisper, choked with emotion. No, I need to get home. All right, take care on your way back. The door closed, the light couldn't enter the classroom. The hallway was bathed in light, but Jian Shin's eyes were full of darkness. For some reason, it felt eerily quiet, even though only their class had stayed behind to finish the movie. Jian Shin found the road unusually empty as she descended the stairs and left the academic building to head towards the main road. The crowd gradually grew, overwhelming Jian Shin. 
She arrived at the school gate and headed straight for A.I. Kiki's shop but was suddenly embraced from behind soon after she stepped out of the school gate. Jian Shin jumped in fright. It took a while before she turned around confused to see Chen Yanbei's face after she had fully registered the situation. What's the matter? Chen Yanbei, wearing a school uniform from who knows where and a baseball cap, had his hair hanging loose. At first glance, he looked somewhat like a student. In her extreme surprise, Jian Shin shakily asked after a while, How come you're back? I came to see you, of course, said Chen Yanbei, hands pocketed in fox nonchalance. Who else would bring me to this backwater town? Not expecting this, Jian Shin asked, What do you mean, back? Are you on holiday? No, I took leave to come back, Chen Yanbei replied. Today's Friday, tomorrow's the weekend, no big deal. Jian Shin fell silent. Chen Yanbei was taller than Jian Shin. He bent slightly and teased. Come, let's see if our little top student has grown taller. Jian Shin managed a wry smile, trying to help the seedling grow by pulling it upwards. Chen Yanbei gave a dry laugh, barely touching Jian Shin's foot with the tip of his own. If you don't want to smile, then don't. It hurts my eyes watching you like this. Jian Shin merely responded with an O. Oh. And indeed, she didn't smile again. Chen Yanbei looked back at the stream of departing people. Want a tour? Jian Shin retorted. It's not like you haven't been here before. Chen Yanbei, the last time you were just about to get into Ho Middle School, now you're already here. They're different, okay? How could our top student not understand such a simple thing? Jian Shin, double quotes dot 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 be careful not to get stopped by security. No way, I'm too good looking. Who would dare? As they were conversing, they made their way into the school against the flow of people. The campus was not too crowded in the evening. Chen Yanbei walked to the pavilion and looking at the champion lake, laughed and said, Hey, let me tell you a story. Kin Jiang and I were here the other day and I accidentally blew my scarf into the lake. I was so angry, I made Kin Jiang go fetch it. But the security officer thought he was going to jump into the lake, it was hilarious. Jian Xing didn't laugh. After a while, Chen Yanbei spoke again, There are so many stray cats in your school. Once, one chased Kin Jiang for his sizzling sausage. Kin Jiang gave half of it to the cat, who then left only to come back a while later with a bunch of other cats. Kin Jiang spent all his pocket money on the cats that day. Jian Xing still didn't laugh. Chen Yanbei turned to look at Jian Xing and after a deep silence asked, Why didn't you come on the 6th? Jian Xing turned to her and looked as the wind flipped Chen Yanbei's hair up and then down and said quietly, My grandmother passed away. All the expressions on Chen Yanbei's face disappeared. Jian Xing looked at her for a few seconds, then turned away. The full moon reflected in the champion lake, identical to the one in the sky, yet seemingly closer to people. The wind made the moon's reflection wriggle. Jian Xing continued, she passed away on the evening of the third day. We buried her in the very early morning. Chen Yanbei reached out and held Jian Xing's hand. It was cold. She touched Jian Xing's forehead to check if she had a fever, but Jian Xing only smiled. I don't have a fever. My mom, on the other hand, had fever for quite a few days, Jian Xing said. Chen Yanbei didn't respond, but she held Jian Xing's hand a little tighter. Jian Xing looked down at the hands, noticing Chen Yanbei's bright red nail polish. Her hands were so white, which made them stand out particularly in the night. Jian Xing watched for quite a while before she finally held Chen Yanbei's hand in return. It was then that Chen Yanbei asked, How are you now? What do you mean? Jian Xing's voice was a bit hoarse. Chen Yanbei answered, I thought that day when you suddenly called my name, you were asking me for help. The wind started to pick up quietly. Jian Xing spoke in the rustling wind. Today is the 13th day of the first lunar month. Chen Yanbei, I haven't been able to sleep well for 10 days. Either I can't fall asleep or she appears in my dreams. Chen Yanbei, am I going to die? You won't, Chen Yanbei held Jian Xing's hand tighter, squatting down in front of her. Looking up at Jian Xing, you are just sick. We should go see a doctor. Does insomnia count as a sickness? Jian Xing asked. Absolutely. Insomnia, everyone experiences it, replied Chen Yanbei. What about you? Chen Yanbei knew that Jian Xing was not just asking if she ever had insomnia, but if she had experienced this when a family member passed away. After a serious thought, Chen Yanbei replied, Actually, not. But I did have insomnia due to heartbreak, Chen Yanbei said. Because of that guy? Jian Xing knew about a boyfriend Chen Yanbei had before. He later disappeared, 
heard that he went to Guangdong to work. Before leaving, he didn't say a word to Chen Yanbei. Chen Yanbei nodded. Yes, him. What a fool. Why? Jian Xing asked for the reason. I don't know, Chen Yanbei said. Maybe for fear of forgetting him, or fear of him forgetting me. What about me? You just miss her too much. Chen Yanbei stood up, hugged Jian Xing's head to her belly. Her voice flowed from her abdomen into Jian Xing's ears. You can't let her go. Is that right? Perhaps so. Jian Xing returned home accompanied by Chen Yanbei. Chen Yanbei, in her school uniform, dared not send Jian Xing to her front door and could only watch her walk away from the corner of the alley. It was not until Jian Xing entered her house that Chen Yanbei emotionlessly took out a cigarette from her pocket and started smoking in the corner. The spark lit up her eyes. Not long after, the sound of a conversation followed by the noise of wheels rolling over the stone-paved road. Why can't she attend the tutoring classes like everyone else? The woman's voice was loud and firm. She's doing well academically. Where does she need tutoring? The man's voice was low. Just because her grades are good doesn't mean she doesn't need it. There's always someone with better grades. The woman shouted. High school is already exhausting. Her weekends will be completely taken up. The man began to reason. Who isn't tired? Who isn't tired? Are you concerned about wearing her out or are you worried about the money? Have you ever earned a single penny in this house? Furthermore, what does she need her weekend time for? To play? What is she going to do afterward? Keep playing? She's a student. She should be studying properly. The woman interjected. Don't keep bringing this up. She knows she needs to study. I keep bringing it up. Is it of any use if I don't bring it up? Have you forgotten all the stuff your daughter got up to in middle school? Hanging out with unsavory people? Going out in the middle of the night for dinner? Lying? Have you forgotten all of that? I bet she's been up to no good. All sorts of nasty stuff we don't even know about. How dare you talk about your own daughter like that? And what if I don't bring it up? Care to share any brilliant ideas? The conversation stopped deep in the alley. Chen Yanbei, a cigarette dangling from her lips, turned to look at them getting out of the car, entering the house, and their voices disappearing. After a while, the door opened again, and the man stood at the entrance, looking in her direction. Chen Yanbei tapped off some of the ash from her cigarette and slowly rose to her feet. Inside the house, Jian Xing looked at the promotional flyer on the table and asked, What's this? Jian Ru answered, A tutoring class for the summer vacation. I'm enrolling you in it now, so you can attend when the time comes. Before she left, Jian Xing looked at the flyer and said just before the door swung open, I don't want to go. Jian Ru stopped in her tracks. Immediately after, Jian Xing heard Jian Ru ask, So what do you want to do? What can you do? Do you think you're something special? Eating my food and drinking my water and now that your wings have hardened slightly you think you're really something, do you? You must attend. Jian Ru shut the door loudly after her words. The room fell silent again. Jian Xing stayed quiet for a long time before crumpling up the flyer and throwing it into the trash bin. She opened the drawer and took out a small box of melatonin and a strip of cakes and a calming and cognition improving drink. Not long after taking the drink, a knock sounded on the door. Lu Cheng called out from the other side of the door, Jian Xing, I've boiled some water. If you want some, remember to pour it out. The green tea bottle has warm water. Jian Xing replied, Okay. The smoke from the cigarette, have you taken it? The smoke from the cigarette, try it tonight. Jian Xing replied, I did. A system message alerted her that someone invited her to join a group. Jian Xing glanced at the group's name, Gold Medal National Athlete 2009 Reserve, and accepted the invitation with a faint smile. Group messages popped out instantly. Ill, wow, welcome, top student. Rose, yearly fish, top student, top student. Give you de hurt, is that Jian Xing? People had all sorts of weird nicknames in the group, and it took Jian Xing quite some time to set her name to be visible to the group. Most of the people were from her class, and a few were from before but hadn't left the group even though they had gone to the literature class. They all seemed to get along quite well. Jian Xing sent a greeting in the group, then didn't chat in the group again. Just like Lin Jia said, there was a lot of nonsense in the group chat. They chatted about everything, from the hottest senior from the last batch to the prettiest senior from the Hongzi department in the next building. Jian Xing wasn't particularly interested in this, so she switched back to her friends list to look around. 
In the list, that rabbit icon was gray. The signature had been changed at some point to a present for each year, a delight for each inch. A present for each year, a delight for each inch. May you still find life is worth it after you've undergone the long-lasting journey. For his 16th birthday, she had actually prepared a lot, but maybe she was just not fortunate enough to give them all away. There was nothing to be disappointed about this. If one person couldn't even fulfill a simple wish like being happy every day, then she wouldn't have the luck to have anything else go her way. She should stop bothering him. Jian Xing quietly logged out of her friend's list. Chen Yanbei had sent quite a few messages. Jian Xing quickly scanned through them and replied with an emoji. The smoke from the cigarette, okay, go to sleep. The smoke from the cigarette, have sweet dreams. Kiss. Jian Xing replied with a heart emoji. Before logging out, Jian Xing changed her signature to, May you be at ease on every hill and river. To him, 